some uh, Yukon Gold Potatoes right here. Quick lesson about knife safety. I'm taking with my cat's paw, and you can do this at home. Yeah. Uh, secure the potato to the board, and I'm gonna cut across it. One of the things that I do actually is I use almost the full blade of my knife. Uh, I like to tell young cooks that it's uh, very much like playing a cello, right? You're gonna use as much of that bow as possible on the string. So I wanna do the same thing with my knife into a, a product like this. And you can see that I keep that cat's paw nice and tight there and cut through it. Once I have it done uh, like this, I'm taking, and this is kind of fun and satisfying, but it's also a really good way to practice your knife skills. And I get them stacked up like this, and then I come across the same thing with that cat's paw, just securing them to the board and push down here. All right, so these are the stack of fries. Now, if we were doing this in the restaurant, I would tell the cooks to do it into a bowl of water. water. Um, worder. <laughs> do it in a bowl of water so that they don't discolor. Uh, but tonight, since we're doing these for home, uh, I'm just gonna get them in there and I'm gonna do a double fry. We're gonna drop them once, we're gonna pull them out, and then we're gonna go right back in and it'll help crisp them up. And I'm gonna actually wait to, to do the second fry until my steaks are off the grill. So we're just gonna take and check on these fries. Ooh, they look good. We want them to get a little bit of color. <laughs> So we're gonna give them just a second. The next ingredient that I have in the house is gonna be a little bit esoteric. And I'll let you watch me break it down. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Who wants to get this steak out? <laughs> so this is the product that I don't actually expect you to have at home. Uh, this is something that, um, you know, sometimes, from time to time, we'll snag at the cafe. This, is a rib roast the standing rib roast so what you can see as i break it open you go to the steakhouse get a ribeye here right, i'm gonna pull these out for a little bit let them kind of chill until we get closer with the steak until we get close with the steak. We're gonna, uh, we want to make sure that a uh, majority of these are really gray and ashy uh, because that means that they're really hot and we burned off a lot of the kind of dangerous, harmful chemicals that are in charcoal. So we are gonna take this and we're gonna cover it up a little bit. We're gonna let those grates get nice and hot and I'm gonna season the steak. We'll go back inside and I'll show you that. But it's like super simple. At the cafe, literally two ingredients go on all of our beef. Uh, our beef comes from Organic Prairie. We put salt and black pepper, and that's it. And that's the key to making a really good steak. Enough salt and black pepper. All right, we're gonna throw a little bit of uh, Driftless Organic Sunflower Oil on there, um, or any oil. I, I just like it because it's local. It also adds this nice bright sunny flavor which uh, you know, I can't get enough of right now. So we're gonna get this over the hot part of the coals. Mm. What about the fiery part? That too. All right, so we're gonna let this sear. Get all that smoke up on there. All that fat's gonna drip onto the actual charcoal. And uh, it really kind of helps perfume the meat, which is lovely. Um, we're gonna get this covered up. I've got my grill holes open because I want that to be nice and warm as it pulls that flavor through. We're gonna take this back in, we're gonna rinse it off. And then uh, as this gets a little bit closer, we're going to drop those fries back in. I'm gonna do one more thing. I think I'm gonna grill some cauliflower. Do you want some grilled cauliflower with your fries? So I'm just gonna cut these into big steaks just like this, right? And I'm gonna leave that stem intact I'm gonna put that back on my plate here. And again, with like the most simplicity ever, we are going to uh, hit this with a little bit of olive oil right here. Olive oil, get it nice and saturated there. Flip it, get a little more olive oil on there. And then again, with the kosher salt, I like kosher salt uh, because I've been a restaurant chef for a long time. You know, I know what it feels like in my hand. I know the size of the crystals. So I have, you develop like the ability to kind of understand how much salt you're putting on things by that feeling and texture. 
little black pepper. Mm. So we can see one side of this. Already, we've got a nice, nice sear going on that side. I'm gonna push it off a little bit of that heat to let it relax a little bit. Cause you can see it's starting to seize. One of the things that I didn't do with this uh, ribeye is I didn't take the time to kind of clean off a lot of that tendon on the outside. On the outside. And when you don't do that, that's when you get that uh, curling on the meat that comes up. I'm gonna take and just drop this cauliflower also on the grill. And one of the reasons uh, we all kind of really dig uh, grilled cauliflower is because when it comes off of the grill, like with this intense heat there, it has a real tendency to caramelize it. And when it caramelizes it, it sweetens it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Mm. Mm. All right, let's put this lid back on. Keep those flames down. We're gonna choke this out just a little bit. All right, we're gonna give this about 15 minutes to cook, and then uh, we'll be back to show you the dramatic conclusion of Dinner with the Zombs. So you asked me nine times out of 10 how I want my steak prepared. I'm gonna say rare, like really rare, because I love the flavor of the beef, and I want it to be super, uh, super, I don't know. I think it's just delicious. It's not charred. You don't get a lot of the overcooking flavor. But when it comes to ribeye, because it's got that fat in the middle, I want it to be just a little more cooked. So one of the ways that I test for doneness is uh, using the hand test, okay? And that goes like this. If you're, if you're teaching somebody at home, you squeeze this part of your hand, that's a rare steak. You go right on here in the palm by your thumb, that's a medium rare steak. You come up here to like the palm of your hand, that's getting a little bit closer to medium. And if you want it medium well or well done, get out of the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> Ruthie doesn't like that so much. She's like, uh-uh, you can't say that. No, uh, anything over than that, you know, like I feel personally, professionally as a chef, that you kind of are taking the love out of the meat. But some people will love it. So, you know, who am I? I'm just an old chunk of coal. <laughs> so we've got the cauliflower here. You can see we got that caramelization. The Maillard reaction, it's charred on the outside, which is great. We're gonna pop that right up on top. Nice and crunchy. Nice and crunchy. We're gonna leave this last piece on here just a little bit longer. Now, the really important thing to do is just to let all this rest. And actually, one of the things, one of the reasons I brought out two trays is I don't want it to necessarily rest on each other uh, because you don't want it to overcook. You don't want it to steam. We don't want DJ Gray Beef making a special appearance tonight. Uh, so we're gonna get those off, let it kind of come down on its own. Get a couple more flips on this. It's beef. It's beef. <laughs> What's that? So this is dinner with the Zoms. Hope you enjoyed it. We are here with famous uh, and famed restaurant critic, Arlo Onion. Arlo, please uh, give us your rundown on, on this meal. Well, uh, I think uh, we're first off cooking with a very overrated chef. Uh, really thinks a lot too much of himself. Um, so, you know, when he's cooking, he's way too overconfident and that's where you run into things like this right here. Uh, don't know what it is, but it sucks. <laughs> um, it's, it's an okay meal. I mean, the french fries are good, but when I took my first bite, it definitely burned my tongue, so I give it about a 2.5 out of 15. <laughs> Some of you may wonder what we all look like at home.